Good morning. It is late. Well, early, but late. Um, it is currently 4.05. Oof, I don't even know if you can see that. Yeah, currently 4.05. It's a mess in here. It's, all, it's always a mess in here. Um, yeah. We just turned the motor on. Maybe you can hear it, but we got to get going because we have to get through the Amanu Pass during slack tide, and we've heard the current can be quite strong. It's a little scary kind of navigating at night in the dark, but um, the full moon was just like two days ago, the strawberry beautiful full moon. So, um, yeah, watch me lift the anchor. Go. <laughs> so my job is to explain why we need to time coming through a pass into one of these atolls. So if you look here, the atoll is basically a big border of land and then it has water inside. So then sometimes, not all the time, there's a little cutout or maybe multiple cutouts uh, allowing a boat to come through and enter into this lovely little oasis here called an atoll. So the problem that we end up seeing here is that when the tide rises and falls, the water level in the atoll wants to rise and fall, but that water needs to come in or go out basically just through this little pass. So when the tide is rising and falling outside of the atoll, the atoll can't drain or fill up fast enough. So water is always rushing through this pass right here. So we need to try to time it at what's called a slack tide, where at the end of a high tide or a low tide, it's basically where the tide is doing nothing and you should have fairly calm conditions. So to determine what time that slack tide is going to be, I have been using this Excel document created by a sailor called the Guestimator, the Tuamotu's current Guestimator, where we plug in which atoll we're going to be entering here and the date that we're going to be entering, and it tells us what the tide should be doing at any given time. So if we look here, we are going to be going through on the 25th of June. So we see that there is a low tide at 11.54 a.m. So if we exit our current atoll on the high tide at 5.42 so that we have calm conditions and then it takes us about two hours to get over to the next atoll, we'll have to just drive around in circles for a few hours until 11.54 a.m. where the low tide is at its lowest and there should be no current uh, coming through that pass. I uh, noticed that. Alrighty, so we're at the foot pedals. I have to use a flashlight because it's dark. And we're going to start bringing up the anchor. You're not going to see this until after I bring it up though, guys, because I need concentration. So, putting you down. Shine light. Update, we actually never left. It's like now almost one o'clock in the afternoon. We went back to sleep, uh, recharged a little bit. There was an issue. There was a knot in the chain around the bridle. I'll go ahead and show you. We're trying to figure that out now. And then hopefully we can get it unstuck. We're just waiting for daylight, feeling rested and uh yeah more energy to just deal with the issue so but i'll show you the knot that i'm talking about now boat problems we missed our chance to go through the pass but i don't know if we're leaving now because there's supposed to be like a a system that's coming through it's gonna 
blow pretty hard um, but I'll like show you that on the maps if I haven't already but let's show you the knot alrighty so I'm all the way at the bow I'm not sure if you can tell but this is the bridle and it's got a knot on the chain which is not good so we're trying to figure that out there's a lot of tension on the chain so of course we have to be careful of our fingers and all of that so let me get away from the bow because I'm afraid I'm going to drop the camera so that's what we're dealing with right now getting ready to deal with it and hopefully in a timely manner we're gonna try to anchor close to town, grab some food supply because we've not been able to go to a grocery store in over two weeks, probably close to three weeks now. So, yeah, wish us luck. Alrighty, I am at the helm. I'm going to just drive forward. Matt is at the bow, and I'm gonna drive forward to release some tension. Sorry, cameras aren't set up to like vlog. I have to like figure that out. So, but just giving you an update. Okay, driving forward. Is it going? Keep going. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Stop. Okay. Oh shit. Yeah, are you in forward still? I I thought I'm in neutral. I I Alrighty, update. So, it turns out that Hubby was successful in removing the knot around the bridle. So, I'm heading up now to the bow to bring up the anchor officially. I'll show you. That <laughs> is what he was working on, but it only really took 30 minutes. So, that's awesome. We're just going to move closer to town. So, going to use these foot pedals to bring up the anchor. it was lightly wrapped around something because it was a lot of tension when you were down there so I couldn't continuously but then the boat swung and then now it's just free flowing but the anchor is over here just let waiting till it swings that's a wrap we're saying goodbye to our oasis um, for now we're just gonna see if we could go stay in the same atoll originally we were gonna go to the how atoll but we missed the timing to get through and out of this pass the Amanu pass so we're just going to anchor near town we heard it's deeper the water is deeper and there's a lot of what we call bommies which are big coral heads that your anchor chain can wrap around so 
it just seems very stressful but we really need to get to like a grocery store and stock up on like munchies and stuff like that because we have not have had any snacks for a long time now but we are underway now and i should get back um, I'm just gonna keep an eye out to see if I see anything sticking up out of the water. I pointed out to the captain, making sure that we're not gonna go over any reefs or anything like that or anything foreign or strange. Oh, the anchor alarm is going off. All right, so we'll update you when we anchor. Logan, Logan, there we go. sure if you could tell but that is the path so probably gonna try for that tomorrow and then over here is town which maybe I'll take you to town I know it's hard to tell but town is over there wait right there there we go can you see the town it's a small town Chilling break. <laughs> we made it. It's about two hour um, motor. We didn't sail, of course. I would have showed you that. There's not enough wind for that today. But yeah, I don't know if I've already taken the time to explain as to why I did not. We did not leave today. It was because we had the knot in the anchor chain, like I showed you, and it made us miss our time to go through the pass to get out of this atoll so we decided to just take a nap and uh, recharge and recoup and hubby was after a couple of tries like 30 minutes later in the afternoon was able to untie the knot around the chain which is very dangerous and we have kind of like PTSD from like in Guanaja in uh, Honduras in the Bay Islands where he was seriously injured <laughs> picking up the anchor chain during like a horrible storm and uh, yeah he could have lost a hand and foot but anyways that was not the case today we were not in any kind of storm so the chain wasn't pulling or anything but we're here maybe I'll take you into town we are waiting to see see how the boat settles before we do that making sure that we're like safely anchored and um yeah let's uh let's keep the adventures rolling hubby is in the background setting the uh, anchor alarm i didn't show you the anchoring process it's like three in the afternoon hubby let's see what you did let's see what hubby did all right. Oh, we could see his reflection. Yeah, you might have to go somewhere where it's not sunny. Well, really hard to tell because you could just see my reflection. But hubby just sets a radius here. You see the anchor chain. The blue is us. The anchor is where we anchored. And it lets us know if we start dragging anchor once we're outside of that radius. So, yeah, he just did that. We're going to chill for a little bit while here. 
but this is the town of Amanu. It's a, the same atoll. But well, we got the dinghy motor started. Yay! Our first time walking around the town of Amanu and actually behind us is the pass that we're gonna be going through, attempting to go through anyhow, tomorrow again. I don't know if you could tell. <laughs> Looks really, really beautiful in my humble opinion. And we just got some goods. We spent quite a bit of money on very, very little things, but Hey, something better than nothing. I guess I'll show you that when we get to the boat. But in the meantime, enjoy some more views from the little town of Amanu. in the background it looks so beautiful cotton candy type sunsets we're headed back there wasn't much I'm gonna show you what we got at the grocery store for $66 very expensive but uh oh the boats that way now and there's my husband taking boat pics as always uh, but I'll be showing you a haul very soon Alrighty, so we've made it back to the boat and we're going to lift the dinghy onto our davits. I hope that doesn't fall. No. I'm trying to show you guys the process, but uh, it's a little too dark. Maybe I could turn on these lights. Does that do anything? Okay. Maybe that's better. So I just hand these things, this clip to Matt, to my husband, and he then clips it onto our dinghy and that's how we pull it up onto our davits. See? Just like that. Mm 
That is most definitely garbage that we have to find a way of disposing. It's like stuff that we can't toss overboard. It's like plastic and cans and stuff. All right, and then here's the last one that I hand over. Okay. And there we have it, now we pull it up. And there we have it. The dinghy is raised up on Davit. That's our Davit system, our solar panels up there. All right, so while the hubby is finishing up securing the dinghy, because we are leaving this atoll for the next neighbor atoll, which is about uh, maybe 20 miles or so. Sorry if you're crooked. Are you crooked? You probably are, okay. Maybe you're less crooked now. But I'll show you our haul. So we got Cheetos. We got one devil's food cake. We got cream crackers biscuits. 10 pieces of these candies that have fur all over them already. It just they didn't really give us like a proper bag for it. He just gave us like a a paper towel. But yeah, we asked for 10 pieces, five pieces each, and they look like this. There's some kind of like cream or something in the center. I don't know if you can see that. Um, I wanted to try these Coco Tuareg. I don't know what they are, but it says in Spanish, galletas rellenas con crema sabor coco, so that's in Spanish and French. We have another one of these. I wanted more, but my husband was like, no, with two of these are fine. So we have cake and brownie mix because we are running low on candy and stuff. We bought the last dozen eggs. I didn't even check them to see if they were broken or anything. Wow, they're really brown. I don't know if you could see that, but they're pretty brown. They look good to me. Logan, go away. Okay, then we bought cold stuff, shrimp, which I think I'm gonna cook tonight. And lastly, we bought bacon. I don't know why we bought bacon, because we do have bacon in the freezer. Maybe we could all, oh, if only we could find some peppers so we could make some breakfast burritos. Yeah, they're need peppers really in a breakfast to, burrito though. They're really hard to find. So we could have mashed potatoes with bacon. You want that and corn? Yeah. So that is everything, you guys. That is my haul. All of that for $66. Very insanely expensive. You would not think so, but I imagine like the things that we got, like the food cake and brownies are expensive, the eggs are expensive, like the proteins are expensive. Everything is expensive. And if you ask me, it was not worth all of that, but. At least we have something now. We could continue baking, we have eggs, so that's a plus. And I don't know if I'm going to just cut this short here for today, so let me pick you guys up. I'm gonna get cooking, so I'm gonna get doing that now. I know we didn't do anything sailing, but I hope that's okay with you all. Yeah, I'm gonna cut it here. We have a long day tomorrow, we gotta wake up so early and try yeah, to I mean we have to leave here at 5 
Oh, so not as early. We have to leave here, this anchorage, at 5.50. I mean, I think that's the, we don't want to leave any before that. Okay, so yeah, we could start sure. lifting anchor at like 5.40. We could start lifting anchor at 6. Okay. So, hubby just confirmed that we do not have to get up super early. We can get up... Huh? We can get up at 6 o'clock in the morning and leave because the path, as you saw, I showed you, um, is right there. It's not that far away. So, anyways, <laughs> very long, drawn-out outro because I don't know if this is where I'm ending things. But just in case, thank you all so much for watching till the very end. If you did, please leave me a hmm, sailboat emoji <laughs> in the comment section down below. And... Uh, Please be sure to check out the next person tagged. Since I am filming this in advance, I do not have a list. I'm not sure who it is, so my bad whoever it is that I'm tagging. But don't forget to hit the description box down below and watch the next person. I'm sure they're fabulous. Water looks calm out there. What we like to see. Yep. Day two and we have successfully made it through the Amanu Pass. On to the next atoll which is about 25 miles away. Ooh, we've got some swell so I'm gonna get back into the cockpit because we are now going into open ocean. <laughs> Look at some of the views. <laughs> Done, Captain. You Thank got, you. yeah, you got us safely through the pass. It wasn't easy, but I did it. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Alrighty, hard to tell on camera because there's reflections and all of that. But we just went through this pass. This is where we are. Well, we were in Amanu, and we are headed over to the next atoll, which is right here. It's called Hal and we're going 4.1 knots right now and it says it'll take us about four hours we have 16 knots to or 16 miles rather to make it here but we have to also time it there's another pass here right there and we have to go through a slack tide just as we went through here and slack tide is around 11:54 this morning it is right now it is 6 17 we lifted anchor at six o'clock and it's a glorious beautiful morning the seas are a little rolly but nothing in comparison to what we've experienced in the past so this is like this is Pretty good, we couldn't have asked for a better day. Everything went so smooth, lifting up the anchor today was super smooth. I did not film today's process, but it was very nice, very nice. We were worried we would get wrapped around bombies or coral heads at the bottom, but it was all good. And um, I don't know if we mentioned, but yeah, we were anchored pretty deep water in like over 100 feet, but or about 100 feet of water. Anyway, so we're just going to 
enjoy the sunrise and slowly make our way there. I do have to edit a YouTube video precisely for a YouTube collab as well as make a spread for Let's Climb with Sarah. So if it stays this calm, I might just do a little bit of work while underway. Anyways, so I'll let you know when we make it there. part. Do we need to be more left? Yeah. Welcome to the end of the vlog. I know I kind of left you all on a cliffhanger. I did very minimal editing to the actual footage there at the end, entering the pass of how. I'll also clip a little insert here of my husband explaining why he thinks we experienced what we did. Looking at the tides for the day that we came in, it says that we should have seen a slack low tide where the tide was not doing anything. There should have been no activity at that pass. Uh, going water going in or out of the pass at 11:54 a.m., which is exactly which time we came in, and we did not see conditions that appeared to have no tidal current going against us. We ended up having a tidal current of four to five knots against us, so we were looking like we were more around here on the guesstimator where it shows that we have a six knot current and that was supposed to be at 842 so i'm not sure if this uh, guesstimator is not accurate if i'm not using it correctly so that is something that we're going to have to keep messing around with and figure out similar to what you know i put in at the beginning i had asked him to do that but yes we are still currently in how i'm at actually filming this clip the day before this video goes up and we're a little bit traumatized by our experience. I just want to talk about my experience. This video is already super long as it is, but um, I hope that you don't mind. And um, anyway, so that, I don't know if the camera really picked it up, how actually like how crazy it is. We did not expect that at all. We were expecting the same exiting Amanu and we didn't. It was complete chaos and I have never felt such like I don't know how to describe it but like I had like an actual physical reaction to how insanely nervous I was my husband thinks it was like adrenaline rush because like I was like literally like shaken like after the fact like after we like went through the past and everything and I felt like super nauseous he's currently working up there if you hear all of that um, and yeah, I just, he says it was adrenaline rush, <laughs> basically. I've never actually felt or experienced that in a very long time. And I guess that what I have to remember is that like if something actually happened to us and like the current actually like did push us ashore, cause that's kind of what we were experiencing is that it was so, so strong that we were being pushed, the waves were pushing us towards the, um, shore and like into reef like if something happened and we sunk we're like right there 
where you know right next to land that we could swim ashore or like call for help put our life raft in the water let the waves just push us onto the shore so nothing actually would happen to us physically it's just um you know we would lose our home and everything um it's just a really terrifying position to be in and I don't know. That's just the name of the game. We are currently working on actually exiting this atoll, leaving this atoll literally on Friday. So we're going to time it better. I don't know. But this is kind of, I just want to like talk about my feelings there towards the end because I didn't actually like close anything out. This atoll has a lot more selection of food. So we've been eating well at least. There has been really strong winds. We've been stuck here for a lot longer than we expected. I kind of mentioned that at the beginning of the video. And um, yes, there was like really, really strong winds winds up to gusts of 34 knots so we're hunkered down for a while and um, now it's time to leave now it's now it's time to go to a new atoll and the goal was to make it to Tahiti for this cultural celebration of Hava um, I don't know if we'll make it in time because yeah it's like towards the middle or ending of the month now but this is a very long drawn out outro as one can expect from me and I really appreciate you making it here all the way to the end um, I know it wasn't exactly sailing but it is part of sailing lifestyle my life so if you really enjoyed this video pretty please give this video a thumbs up if you want to see more videos from me make sure you hit the subscribe button it is free after all and don't forget to head over to the next person's channel I'll have them linked down below alrighty you guys see you in the next one bon voyage